in the previous video, we looked at the basic terms of how to upgrade our understanding of kinematics, but now with angular, angular thing turning in a circle. So today, we're going to look at how to understand what is centripetal acceleration and force and where is it? Okay, go back to this circle. First question for you to think about. Look at this diagram. Oh. We have velocity, right? I'm going to change them a bit so that we have the final velocity Vf, which is B. Okay, this is the final velocity Vb. And we also have initial velocity, which is when the particle is starting off at A. So this is Va. Okay, so how, where is acceleration? Ah? That's my question for you. How to find acceleration? Where will we draw the arrow? Once upon a time, if I say, oh, I drop a ball, the ball is falling down. Okay, so it has a velocity downwards, faster and faster. So maybe at first initial very small, then downwards very big. Why? Leh? Because of acceleration pointing downwards. We know where to draw the acceleration. Acceleration down, up, left, right. Now in a circle, where is acceleration? Ah? Are you? How to think about this thing? Okay, so we're going to look at some observations of how the thing moves in the circle to figure out actually where is acceleration pointing? Ah? Hmm, is there even acceleration, miss? Acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. Is there a change in velocity? Ah? Hmm, let's look at the let's look at the table on the right. So the first observation we have here. The direction of velocity vector of the particle is tangent to the circular path. Tangent means you just touch it at a certain way where this purple color, let's see, VA is right angle to the radius. That's how we know it's tangential, lah, this right angle. So that observation tells us something already. Your path is curved, but your velocity is a straight line. Hmm. So one moment, oh, your velocity is like this. Another moment, suddenly it points another direction already. Oi, direction is changing. Eh? So that's the first observation we can note an inference for. So if your, if your velocity vector keeps changing, ah, you can say it means that the direction of velocity, remember that velocity is vector. Ma. You point here, point there is different one. Okay? The direction of velocity changes. All the time? Yep. All the time. As long as you are turning, your arrow is changing. So I don't know. You point where you are going. Okay, second observation. Let's go back to the circle. So velocity we mentioned is a vector. Huh? Okay, we write down first. Velocity is a vector. So when the direction change, velocity change. Although, let's say the purple one on the left side, you say is 5 meter per second. Let's say. After that, you go to the other side already. It is still 5 meter per second. Okay. That one, speed is constant. 5 meter is still 5 meter, but the direction is now different. So velocity has changed. So we can conclude here that if there is a velocity change, ho, 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 change in velocity, which is a vector, then you can say the particle is accelerating. How we know that? Because I uh, got change in velocity means got acceleration low. Uh, like this. Oh. Okay. One moment you point here. One moment you point here. Although the V is still the same. But the velocity vector is changing. Okay. So last thing then. So we are sure there's going to be acceleration. So where is it going to be? Directional acceleration actually is directed to the center of the circle center of circle or sometimes we say the direction uh, is center of circular path okay and it is also known as centripetal acceleration special kind of acceleration lah. a but with a c there okay center of circle or circular path i have no space here circular path Bit small. All right. Okay. So how do we how do we convince ourselves that this? We're gonna do some vector drawings right here. Play with the arrows a bit. So if I want to find my centripetal acceleration, or I just say the vector, what do I need to do? I need to take my final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. But 
test vectors. So VB, which I want to give it a vector hat, minus VA is going to be my acceleration. How do we do vectors again? Let's copy paste. This is my attempt to duplicate VB. <sighs> okay, never mind. We just VB. Okay. Then VA. But don't forget this is minus VA. So we need to... Minus VA means the VA become backwards. Or, so it's a minus. Remember your vectors from AS? Okay, we need to flip the vectors backwards. So I'm going to join this tip to tail. Ooh, kind of joins up like that. I'm going to label this VA. But we minus VA. So this is negative VA. So the vector is pointing the other way. Which means our acceleration will be these two together. So acceleration will be the third arrow. Which is this resultant force. Sorry, not resultant force. <laughs> resultant vector acceleration. Okay, so that's how our acceleration will look like. Lah. We can move it around. So this one is taking an average between these two intervals. VB, VA. So somewhere in the middle. Lah, so something like this. Okay, I will redraw it right here. So acceleration, if we were to draw the vector, is pointing like that towards the center of the circle. Over the change in velocity. VB minus VA. Okay, so now that we know where it's going to be pointing, okay, we write down here already, right? Point to center of circle. Okay, this one very important. You must know where is it. So you're constantly accelerating towards the center. Your, your poor particle actually want to move in a straight line one. This particle say, Aya means I want to go in a straight line. But then, nope. You have to move in a circle. Why are we moving in a circle? Something else is causing it to accelerate to the center. So you always accelerate the center. Okay, then you want to move here already. Somebody pull you down. Okay, now you are here. Now you want to move down away from the center, but somebody pull you down. So you are perpetually going towards the center. And that can only happen. Acceleration is related to who? Force. Got force, got acceleration. So we say, oh, hang on a second. Newton's second law says a net force is related to acceleration. If you got acceleration happening, there must be a force. And there's a special name for it. We call this, and we say that a resultant force, because got acceleration, a resultant force is necessary. Eh, I didn't write force. Ah. Okay, I put F. Lah. A resultant F is necessary for any object. For an object to change direction. Lah. Or to travel in a circular path or circular motion. Okay, to provide what we call a special name, to provide centripetal force. Ooh, what is this? Centripetal force. Okay, pause here a bit. Object, if you don't exert force, will stay at rest. Okay, remember for Newton's law? If this fella is chilling here, he's just going to chill there. If you are in bed, you are in bed. If you are already moving in a straight line without any resistance, no friction, nothing, then you just continue moving in a straight line forever. But now you keep changing direction, so there's a force, 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 force. But what is a centripetal force? Hmm, let's look at some pictures. So here are some examples of other types of circular motion. Look at the first one. This lady is swinging a ball around. Woo! Why the ball can move in a circle? I thought ball will th you throw it go in a straight line one. Yes. What is the force here that is pulling the ball in a circle? You look very carefully at the picture. The string. You see this string? There's a tension force. T for tension. Nah. So tension provides um, centripetal force, which is a resultant. What is pointing to the center? Tension. No. So you say tension. If you look on the right, a car turning around a bend. The car is supposed to go in a straight line. Why suddenly can go in a circle? Think carefully. Oh, the tire means the tire will help you. You turn the wheel, the tire will turn, ma, right? But you see, if you are on ice, you drive on a smooth surface and you try to turn. Cannot. Your car will go and crash into the some mountain straight away. Feel fly there and crash. It's because your tire got grip, got friction. Ah, so what is this red arrow? This arrow is really frictional force of your between your tire and your road and this is known as the centripetal force so here we will say friction 
provides who provides centripetal force to allow this thing to go in the curve? Friction provides centripetal force. Next, come see you can see more interesting things. Wow, well, Miss Roller Coaster also can. Can anything got curve a bit is circular motion already. Why this roller coaster can turn? Oh, it's not a bit more challenging already. So you see the curve. Why is pulling it down? Weight, gravity. Oh, but it's also two force leh. Got one here. Got one here. Hmm. We will learn more about this in the coming section. But I'm gonna put here. What is this N? Ah? normal contact force. The the purple color track push up the car right. So there's a normal force. N. N. What is this one? Mg, weight of the roller coaster. N and Mg, both of them provide centripetal force. Miss, why got two one? Because both are within the same line of radius. Away from circle, uh, away from circle here, away from circle. And then this is how the circle look like. So you see, though, what is the force pointing to the center or away from it? That contributes to centripetal force. Last one, pretty easy one. You see, there's a earth. Going around the sun. Means why the earth go around the sun? Why don't the earth just go away? Oh, trust me. The earth wants to go away. A certain velocity, you just fly away. Why cannot? Somebody pull it, ma. Gravitational force. So here you see this one. This this pink color arrow. This is our gravitational force. The sun pull the earth. And that contributes to what we call the centripetal force. So who provide centripetal force? We say here, gravitational force, Fg. We'll learn more about this in the next chapter after this. So there's two equations or two main bunch of equations you need to know for force and acceleration. Got acceleration means got force. Got force means got acceleration. They are related. So the very first one, centripetal acceleration. Write this down if you have not. We need to know that there is a centripetal acceleration. We use A. Sometimes we put the C down there. Sometimes we don't put the C. So just... If it's circular motion, you got A, you assume it's centripetal acceleration. Lah. Okay, so centripetal acceleration, that's the equation for it. That's V square over R. If you're curious to know, miss, where this V square over R come from, go check out the bonus video which derives this equation if you want to know about it. There's some maths involved. Just a heads up. Okay, so one form is to write as V square over R. Another form is to substitute in a uh, equation for V. So previously, we looked at V is what? Tangential velocity, right? You see here, V equals to R omega. We can plug that in here. What do we get? So since we have, uh, let's put the V here. V equals to R omega. We can sub that in and we will get R omega square. That's another form of this equation. Lah. So you can either use this or this, but make sure you know how to to... Uh, remember or recall these equations in the first place. The second one we need to know is centripetal force on the right side. So what are the equations for centripetal force? If you don't know where to start, you go Newton's second law. Okay, miss. F net equals to ma. But now we are looking at centripetal things. So if you want to, you can add fc and then ac. Everything is thrown inside there. So we substitute. Oh. Centripetal force, fc. Whoever contribute to it, lah, I'm I'm gonna drop the the sum of M V square over R. Where the V square over R come from? Ne? Here on the left side. I plug in this V square over R inside this acceleration. So let's draw a little bubble. A equals to V square over R. That's how I sub in that value. So this is the very first equation to use in this whole chapter. Another form is oh we can sub in R omega square also, right? Okay. You also can use V equals to R omega. Sub in. Then what do we get? We get FC equals to MR omega square. Okay. So to summarize, here's one common explain, explain, explain question which may appear. And kind of also it's a good point to summarize everything here. Okay. So... How do you think of circular motion? Why can things move in a circle? Because somebody is pulling it. I pull you around me and then you will go in a circle around me. Okay. So why circle in the first place? Firstly, whenever you do this kind of question, you must identify who provides centripetal force. Is it gravity? Is it a string? Is it 
normal contact force these are some of the possible choices la. so gravity and what else are tension string normal contact force what who who is the force pulling so there will be some kind of force let's say let's label this pointing towards the center of a circle okay and this is some force which contributes to centripetal force. So let's say tension, lah, okay, tension. String, somebody tie a string and swing something in a circle. Okay, and one thing you need to know is whatever force this is, let's just call this F, this always normal to velocity. What does normal to velocity mean? How would you draw the, the direction of velocity? Velocity, we can draw it as, let's say the object is moving here at a certain speed. It's our tangential or we just call velocity. This one is always perpendicular. No matter where you are in this circular path. Okay, so maybe I'm down here now. Draw velocity. I still have a force pointing to the center which is perpendicular. Okay, so I'm just leave one here. Oh my goodness, everything disappeared. Uh, the second or the third last point is that this speed, this pink color V, is constant if your force is constant. So if this one is a constant speed, that means your force also constant, no? It didn't get bigger or smaller. Okay, so velocity is one way, force is perpendicular. Lastly, force is down to center, acceleration also to center. This one also pointing to center. But velocity is tangential. Tangential. Normal uh, is a weird... <laughs> I don't know why they use normal. Normal means perpendicular. A is perpendicular to B. A is normal to B. Alright. So coming up next, we'll look at some basic examples of how to deal with calculations relating force, velocity, radius, and several things like that. Oh, so got acceleration. Oh. Okay, okay. Not bad, not bad. Okay, so you can go play with some of these simulations to stare at it until you can see the thing moving in a circle in your head. Okay, so that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.